So the next topic we're going to talk about is sound. And any sound we make essentially has three parts, the beginning, the middle, and the end. The beginning is the articulation, the middle is the length of the note, and the end is the end of the note, the decay of the note. And we're going to talk about all three. So to start, we're, I'm going to play just the end. I'm going to isolate the end, Dukas, Sorcerer's Apprentice, to talk about articulation. Oh, my head sticks. That's version one. Here's version two. So that's a very subtle difference, but could everyone hear a difference between the two versions? Ah, oh, that's good, yes. Nodding, nodding heads is good. So if we look at this from a woodwind perspective, here's the score. They have exactly the same articulation we have. Exactly. So how do you think a clarinet or a flute player would play this? They'd play the first two measures, very short, as short as they can play. Now, unfortunately, we have a, we're dealing with a different instrument, so we can't play short. But the third measure has a long slur over it. So if we alternate and articulate every single note of that, um, I like to say it's like, you will hear me play every single note that I'm playing. When we have that attitude, we're completely ignoring the slur. But if we play it with doubles or in a much lighter style, we can actually change our articulation. I mean, I, I saw virtually half the room nod their head that they could hear a difference. So we can make an articulation difference on glockenspiel. So this is a great example of where articulation is really important. So the next thing is the middle of the note. Now, as percussionists, we tend to not really think about this because it, the note's gone almost immediately after we hit it. But we have options, and composers tend to have that same attitude. Um, if we look at Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony, all the beginning, all of the notes are eighth notes. Now, I guess that means all of them should be short, right? I, I, I'm seeing some massive shakings of heads here. So if that's not the case, then we really need to go to the score to look and see what we should do. So the, our first entrance at A, the part's on the left, the score's on the right. Um, I'm probably in the way of a lot of you. But, um, what's the first note everyone plays? It's long, and ours is short. So Tchaikovsky didn't help us out very much here. So we have a long note to start. Four bars later, we look at the same thing, same eighth note, and everyone else has an eighth note, so it's short. It's not long. So now it's a case-by-case -case basis. So if you look even later, finally we have a little bit more direction. We have an eighth note and then a quarter. Okay, so we have something different. We have something to work with. But that quarter, how long does the quarter last? If we look at the score again, everyone has long notes but then stops on beat one. So it shouldn't just ring over until the next beat, beat two. So the point here is we have a lot of options in terms of our, the length of our note. And especially in um, metal instruments that sustain, we've got to take that into account, the length of a note. So when I'm playing a part like this, I mark it up like this. So I'm going to play it, and hopefully you can see my um, length of note um, markings here.
we just played the page based on the notes on the page, it probably sound nothing like that. But hopefully, by showing how long every note is supposed to be, we're showing the panel, because we're playing by ourselves, obviously, in an audition situation, that we really know this music. So that excerpt is a great example and a great transition into our next topic, and that is the